Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new Anadis Raspberry Pi 4 case. Now this case is designed to be passively or actively cooled, but in this video I'm just going to be testing this case's passively cooled capabilities because personally I prefer a passively cooled system with my Raspberry Pi. And if you're not familiar with passive or active, active includes some type of fan, passive has no moving parts whatsoever. So inside of the box, you're going to get this piece of acrylic that goes on the top of the case so you can see the board when you have the case assembled. We'll get a little deeper in here. We also have a full assembly guide, and it is in English. Easy to follow, no problems there. And finally, we have the case and the hardware. So as for the hardware, everything you need to assemble this, including thermal pads and rubber feet for the bottom of the case, and the case itself. This is actually made out of aircraft grade aluminum. It's A606 and it's made by CNC milling. Overall, I really do like the design of this. It's got some thick walls on it. We have a lot of aluminum to dissipate the heat from the CPU, RAM, and the USB controller on the Raspberry Pi. All the ports are accessible. We even have access to our LED on the Raspberry Pi 4. And this does have a mounting spot for a fan. You can throw a 30 millimeter fan in here and keep it even cooler. But like I mentioned, what I'm going to be doing is using this as a passively cooled case. So basically, it's going to make contact with the RAM, the USB controller, and the CPU of the Raspberry Pi 4, and extract the heat into the aluminum case. They actually have two different color variations here. We have the silver, which we just unboxed, and we also have the black version. It is exactly the same case, except it has a black anodized aluminum finish on it. Overall, I do like the look of this, but I'm very partial to the silver one for some reason. So that's the one I'm going to be using in my test today. Like I mentioned, it comes with all the hardware, and we also have our thermal pads for the CPU, the RAM, and the USB controller. So the case will make contact with each of these chips to extract the heat from the Pi 4. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick assembly of throwing the thermal pads on the Raspberry Pi 4. Basically, we're just going to grab the shell of the case, or the midsection of the case, place the Raspberry Pi 4 in there. You do want to make sure that everything's making contact. So my thermal pad for the CPU did stick to the top. It is making contact. So we'll just place this down on here. And I do notice that a little bit of that thermal pad for the USB controller chip is sticking out. I'm just going to rearrange that real quick, make it look a little nicer. And there we have it. I've just adjusted that thermal pad underneath. Everything's looking good so far. The Pi seems to be sitting in here perfectly. I have all of my ports lined up. So now it's time to secure the Raspberry Pi inside of the case, and we're going to do that with the bottom plate and four of the included Allen screws. You don't need to over tighten these screws on the bottom, just keep them snug and you'll be good to go. The next thing we need to do is put the top acrylic plate on, and it does have this covering on it to keep it from scratching. I'm going to go ahead and pull this off. And they do include four of these little standoffs that you're going to use on the top. There will be a tiny gap between the case and the acrylic plate, and that's going to allow airflow. And it's also going to allow you to route any kind of ribbon cables from your camera to a DSi display or GPIO cables. Now this will be a good time to add your fan if you're going to be using a fan. This has mounting brackets for a standard 30 millimeter fan that you can pick up on Amazon or you can get a specialty RGB fan if you really want to. But like I mentioned, I want to use this case passively, so I'm going to go ahead and put the acrylic top on. And if we take a close look at this acrylic top, you can see that there's a little cutout here for those standoffs to slide right inside of. So we're just going to put the top right on and put the last four screws in. I really like the way this acrylic looks. It's got kind of a bluish green tint to it. And there it is. I still have those four rubber feet that I can put on the bottom of the case to keep it from sliding around on my desk, but yeah, I really do like the way this looks. And like I said, there's a small gap at the top, and this is going to allow air to escape, but it also allows to run your ribbon cables in for your DSi display, your camera connector, and even GPIO cables or wires. And if you really don't want that gap there, you don't have to add the standoffs. You can put the acrylic top right on the case and use the included screws to mount it down. So it's easy to assemble, I think it looks good, but we really need to see how this thing performs. Now I'm going to be running some stress tests on my Raspberry Pi 4 here, running Raspberry Pi OS. The first test I'm going to run is at the stock clocks, no overclock whatsoever, and then we'll bump it up to 2.1 GHz and see how this case cools.
Okay, so I have Raspberry Pi OS installed and I'm actually running Stressberry to test this out. We're at the stock clocks here. This is going to run for 10 minutes. We're at 1.5 gigahertz, as you can see. Got the Raspberry Pi 4, 8 gigs of RAM. When this is finished running, I'm going to let it cool down. I'm going to overclock the CPU to 2.1 gigahertz. I'm going to run the same exact test here. And then I can create an easy chart just to see what kind of temps we got with this new case. Okay, so I'm finished with the testing and it's actually looking really good with the stock clocks and an overclock of 2.1 gigahertz on the CPU and 700 megahertz on the GPU. But before we move over to the charts, I just want to give you a brief explanation on why we want to keep our Raspberry Pi cool. So the stock clocks on the Pi are 1.5 gigahertz. The thermal throttle limit on the Raspberry Pi is set at 80 degrees Celsius, and it can actually reach 80 degrees Celsius pretty easily at the stock clocks. Once it hits that 80 degrees Celsius mark, the Raspberry Pi will actually underclock itself to as low as 500 megahertz trying to cool that CPU off. And in turn, it cuts down on performance a lot because we just went from 1.5 gigahertz down to 500 megahertz, which is a big decrease for a little single board computer like this. And when we're overclocking, it'll reach those temps even quicker. So if we can keep our Raspberry Pi CPU under that thermal throttle limit, be it stock clocks or overclocked, you're just going to get better performance out of this and not to mention longevity out of the board. And here's the results from my test. In blue, we have the 1.5 GHz clock. This is the stock clock of the Raspberry Pi 4. Using Stressberry for 10 minutes, we hit a maximum of 52 degrees Celsius, which is way under that thermal throttle limit of 80 degrees Celsius. And even at our 2.1 gigahertz overclock, we hit a maximum of 63 degrees Celsius. So the case is definitely doing its job, but I do want to mention with that 2.1 gigahertz overclock, I believe within 30 to 40 minutes, we could still hit thermal throttle because the case is the cooler, it's aluminum, and it's kind of like a sponge. It can only hold so much heat. And since I don't have any kind of fan blowing on the case itself to expel the heat from the aluminum, eventually this would definitely heat up all the way to 80 degrees Celsius. But under normal use case scenarios, you're going to be hard pressed to hit 63 degrees Celsius with this case on your Raspberry Pi 4. But in the end, it's really up to you what case you choose for your Raspberry Pi 4. If you're looking for a passively cooled case, this definitely works out well. You can always add a fan down the road. But if you're looking for something with a couple more features built in out of the box, I would go with something like the Argon 1. That's pretty much it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in picking one of these up, I will leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.